We got my co-host Maddie, the chef, who's in the building. Let me know if you got that. It's good. Pride, Pride by Pack. Who's our Who's gonna be our guest for today? Let me know. Thumbs up if you guys can hear me. Can you guys see me? Yes, I can see you. A bit chop. There's a little bit of the delay. It's choppy. Yes. Okay. Okay. It's delaying you. There you go. Yes. All right, all right. So what's going on, everybody? Hope everyone's having a fantastic day so far on this beautiful Sunday. But those of you who don't know, both of us, Maddie, the chef, and myself, we're, we're doing another episode of Soundboard Sundays. Today's episode 39. And Soundboard Sundays is basically a way for music producers, aspiring music producers, and aspiring singers, songwriters, or both to get on the same page and collaborate and even learn um, based on some of our experiences and certain things that are related to the music business. Tap in if you can hear me well. Shoot. You can you, can you guys hear me? Mm. I think the camera. Try it without your camera and see how it goes. I'm having difficulty coming off without the camera. Guys. Okay, let me try this. Thumbs up. I'm, I'm going to just come off. Okay. I'm going to just come off and have um, have, produce, have have Charles. Charles, uh, uh, send a request so you can come on and you guys can go ahead and uh, uh, get started. started. Yep. All right, let's do it. Perfect, perfect. What's going on, Crypto, Troy? I see you guys doing. I see, I see you guys. I see you guys. What's happening? So basically... For this episode of Soundboard Sundays, episode 39, with the co-host Maddie, the with my co-host Maddie, the chef, and myself, we basically break down certain things that music producers and aspiring singer songwriters need to know in the music, need to know in, in order to flourish in the music business. And we got all the sauce for you guys. If you guys need anything related to the music business when it comes to, you know, position yourself or even learning some tips as it as it go as it goes down to um, recording. We got that. Now, before we get into all of those details, usually what we do at the beginning of every Soundboard Sundays is we start off with an introduction. And you, wait, let me see. And the introduction is basically a way for both of us, Maddie, the chef, and myself, to talk about um, our sponsorships. Not only that, we get into some of the things that, yes, yes, no doubt. Okay, no, co no problem. So I'll just give you guys a, bl a, a brief rundown of how things go down in Soundboard Sundays. Basically, the first thing we do, we talk about our sponsorships. As uh, you guys may know, Maddie the Chef has an audio book for emerging music producers and singer-songwriters that is mostly focusing on mindset. So if you guys need to understand the importance, if you guys really feel like you're stuck at a certain point in your career or you don't necessarily have a, a good way of focusing, well, I would encourage you guys to tap in with Maddie the Chef with this audiobook for music producers, not only music producers, but singers and songwriters. And it's really worth the price. I got that one. And I promise you one thing that uh, you guys will feel amazing after, after listening to it or even uh, keeping it in your, in your environment at all times. Whether you're in a studio, you feel like you need to do something that is um, a, li a little bit more relaxed, you listen to it and then it's gonna it's gonna help you focus. Just I'm gonna I'm gonna get I'm gonna get I'm gonna give you guys the name of it just to be sure I have let me right here. Or Maddie could even post it. So it's basically called it's basically called I am a music producer and it's an affirmations audiobook. So as soon as you tap in with that, you guys will be good. So that's what is uh, today's sponsor today's sponsorship is uh Maddie. Yes, yes. He got it, he got it. And it's also sponsored by my ebook called How to Attract Gigs as an Emerging Artist, a Guide to Position Yourself in a New Digital Entertainment Economy. And the purpose of the ebook is simply to help you guys attract gigs. If you're an artist that is struggling with attracting gigs, if you're an artist that is struggling with uh, performing in front of a great audience, if you're an artist that is struggling with the ability to get paid gigs, and I promise you, this ebook is for you. And you will not hesitate. You will not um, worry about anything else. That's for sure. What's going on, Prod? Prod by Pack. 
what's going on what's going on and a lot of people they they say the problem but it's actually um that, that the abbreviated word for produce so it's produced by pat no doubt no doubt no doubt yes, produced yes, by pat. how's everything yeah. going so far oh i'm good man i'm good um taking these last couple of days to kind of um you know relax a little bit to get back to it so i can start the week week off pretty strong so how about you bro i'm great man thanks for asking you know, I'm just here focusing on the moment and making sure that, uh, you know, I, I keep my head above water at all times. Absolutely. Absolutely. No doubt. So before we continue, before I, I talk about today's topic, I want you guys to understand uh, who we have, we, who we have on today's uh, episode of Soundboard Sundays. It's a gentleman who used to work in the music business. He worked with several artists. He was a producer at one point, if I'm not mistaken, right? Right, right. Producer. Uh, he worked with a lot of great names. Uh, you you can mention that if you want at towards the end of the interview. And um, not only that, but he has understood the importance of pivoting and know what was happening in the music business and uh, how today's, uh, how how what he's doing today could be more impactful. You guys will learn, you guys will learn a lot more about his story. And today he's mostly known as a brand a &R, if I'm not mistaken, correct? Right, right. That's it. So we're going to get straight into it, man. So the first thing I want to know, um, who is pro who is produced by PAC and what does brand A&R mean to you? Yeah, so uh, produced by PAC, uh, in my journey of becoming what I am now as a brand A&R, I got started off, like you said, as producing. Um, got started off producing in about, you know, 2011. Um, that led me, you know, to actually being a graphic designer as well that year later because I've, I've seen the need that um, a lot of different local artists that I was around they needed somebody to make the beats also needed somebody to create what that uh, structure looked like so I got into uh, graphic design which led me into branding and marketing which kind of encompassed everything that I do now so um, throughout this journey I've worked with quite a few different people mostly um, local artists um, some of those local artists was Johnny Mays. Another one was uh, IQ, my boy IQ Music, but also uh, did a record with Lil B. So that's probably like my biggest um, placement that I had up to this point. So throughout my transition, uh, I started to really help these artists come up with the concept of their music, uh, the concept of their projects, whether it was a song, whether it was a, a mixtape or an album. And uh, really started to become like an A&R myself when it comes to the branding, when it comes to the concept and things of that nature. So uh, throughout my journey, uh, I was doing that for a while. Then I got into, you know, helping entrepreneurs. So uh, my transition has really been from, you know, I went from producing artists to now I'm producing entrepreneurs uh, with the same aspect of learning how to brand like an artist. So uh, that's pretty much what it means to be like a brand a and just like an A&R is to a record label with their artists to help them develop uh, their talent, to help them market themselves in a way. I do the same thing. And there is an overlap still where I'm still able to work with artists as long as they understand that uh, you're not just an artist. Like, especially in 2022, you also are a service-based entrepreneur as well. So that's a little bit in a nutshell what I got going on. I love it. I love it. And I wanted to stop you at one point when you said Lil B because he was a he was a big name at one point. Right. <laughs> you you figured a way to connect with him in a way where you added value to his career. And I'm pretty sure that you were excited at the, at the time. You was it at the time he was big, pretty big, or after? Um, it, it it was. Um, yeah, it wasn't it wasn't the the height height of his career. It was like. The height of his career was probably anywhere between 2011 to about 2013. But the time when me and him worked, it was about, I want to say, 2014. And um, I, I uh, produced a record called 05 Welcome Remix uh, on his um, base uh, Paradise album. Oh, that's dope, man. That's good. Those are good news. And, you know, since you were talking about an a &R journey, right, I wanted to mm -hmm. know... Uh, what? How would you describe your journey as a brand A and R, uh, since since the time you decided to rebrand yourself or call yourself that name? 
Um, yeah, so when it when it comes to my journey as a brand and I do take it back far as back as when I was producing because I wasn't just a person just to make beats. Right. I was always in the background helping them with their branding, with their marketing, with uh, their rollout plans for their singles, things of that nature. So when I made the pivot to work with more entrepreneurs, um, that that pivot happened in 2019. So um, I, I seen, you know, it was more people around me at, at that time that I felt like I can be a bigger impact while being able to um, have the opportunity to finance the living or or the my business model to how I wanted to actually be compensated, if that makes sense. Got it. Man, that's different because at the end of the day, once you work behind the scenes, you're able to see certain things that obviously the people who are in front of the camera won't necessarily see. And that's mm -hmm. when, you know, it becomes easier for you to coach. Amazing. And Absolutely. what are, what are some, you know, because sometimes – we tend to forget that mi mistakes could, you know, help us be more grounded and uh, help us see better. So what are some of the mistakes you've made as a brand a &R, uh, that you're grateful for? Um, I guess one of the biggest uh, mistakes that I can kind of um, go off of was really um, investing in myself. So it's it's been, um, and shout out to everybody in the chat. Uh, I, I see everybody in the comments. I just want to acknowledge y'all, but um, yeah, like investing, and it's not necessarily a mistake to invest in yourself. I'm not saying that at all, but mm. sometimes uh, your investments is going to pay off and sometimes they won't. Yes. So the lesson that happened um, within uh, learning, like I, for for instance, um, I invested 10K for a program. Um, Whoa, and so, a man, wait, wait, wait. I'm, I'm going to have to... <laughs> I'm going to have to stop you right there, man. You said 10K. <laughs> yeah, basically. And you said that just like it was a, a basic number or just a small number, but people don't understand the importance of the amount. You said 10K. And tell us about that. Absolutely. So um, I still have the tools and the, and, and, and the skill or the structure. Like, I can still log in and have all the access to the information. But, yeah, like, I I needed – I got to the point where it's like I was building this, this program or this system um, – from scratch, but I was like, you know what? Why not? Why reinvent the wheel? You guys hear me? Yeah, yeah, we good. Okay. You bet. You bet. Perfect. But yeah, I, I just pretty much wanted to get into a system and program that works where I can utilize where I'll be able to help more people quicker and faster. Uh, got it. And you just mentioned how you utilize that system to help people quicker and faster that was based on, on what you've invested in and i'm assuming that i understand that coaching was one of the most important aspects of it so how was important how important was coaching or is coaching to you in your career at the moment uh it's, it's still very important like even though um when i had that particular experience with that particular program i wasn't able to um well i want to say i wasn't able to but uh, my capability of at that moment and in that time, I wasn't able to actually get the full extent of that whole program because yeah. I still needed more work and I still needed more <laughs> mindset coaching. So even beyond that, um, in order to get to this next spot, um, I hear uh, it's, it's a speaker's name, Myra Golden. He always says this. He said, you're doing as much as you can right now in this moment. Mm -hmm. Like you're, you're, you're the best person who you can be in this moment. In order to get to that next step, you're going to have to need coaching. You're going to have to need new information. You're going to have to need um, extra um, people that's going to be there to stretch you in ways where uh, you can actually grow and get to that next step. So I think I think it's, it's, it's necessary. Mm, definitely necessary, especially when, just like Maddie the chef just said, uh, coaching cuts down years of time and resources, and that's key. You, wanna, you need a GPS in order to get to where you want to go, your destination. Now, what do you look for in entrepreneurs or even creatives? Because we're, since we're in the topic of, of Soundboard Sundays, and you know, right. we know that uh, music producers are not only people who make beats; um, they're more than that. Uh, creatives, singer songwriters are more than that. They're entrepreneurs, and they they're gonna need your your services too. So, what do you look for um, in entrepreneurs or creatives before collaborating with them? Yeah, so uh, when it comes to entrepreneurs and creatives, even producers or artists, for example, uh, the biggest thing that I look for is one, um, somebody who is um, 
willing to try something new. <laughs> it's a lot mm -hmm. of times where, especially in the music um, industry, we kind of get stuck on how things used to be. Mm -hmm. And we haven't adapted with the times of how things are now. So how open is this person to actually uh, receive new information and actually put these things into action as soon as they uh, get this information instead of just, you know, um, watching hours and hours of YouTube and not doing anything with it. Yeah, because, you know, some people think that YouTube universities, YouTube university has all the answers, but there's more to it, you know, like you yep. just mentioned, you invested $10,000 and you invested more than 10,000 because you knew, you know what 10,000 feels like and you could even price that. Right, yeah, you went out a little bit. I heard the 10,000, but I think okay. you're back. Right, so I was basically saying, uh, I, I know for a fact that the 10,000 you invested in uh, gives you a taste to invest more than just the 10,000 because you know what that experience feels like and you can even price some of your services and products at 10,000 or even a little, uh, a little bit less. Absolutely, that that as well, because um, it's, it's, I believe in um, any type of course or any type of anything that you're paying for, I believe the person who's offering that to you should either be practicing what they're teaching you or um, for whatever price that they're, they're charging, that's something that they either paid before or <laughs> looking to pay in the very near future. I believe um, it, 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 sh it should coincide uh. in, and and uh yeah it, it just makes sense to me because there's a lot of times where people uh they feel like they can't charge a certain like let's say for example um you got a music producer right. and the 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 current structure of how music producing is going is i have a beat site online and i send my beat for 30 dollars, but you really can sell that beat for let's say three thousand dollars if you really wanted to mm. <laughs> The reason why you don't think that you can't sell your beef for three thousand dollars is because you don't have that belief, you don't have that mindset, and you probably never even paid three thousand dollars for something, anything in your life. So um, there, you, there you go. That becomes like your certification or your diploma for you know the approval of for the approval of what you've been through, of what you what you've experienced, so that you could charge it to a certain degree or you price it a, li a little bit higher to a certain degree. Absolutely, love it. Now. Could you tell us, um, could you share with us one of your biggest success stories as an a &R, as a brand a &R, uh, to today's day? Absolutely. Today's day. So um, one of my favorite people that I've been working with for years uh, is my bro, um, my right hand. His name is IQ. And um, I actually have been working with him. Uh, I, I was producing a lot of his records when he was an artist. Um, I actually created a lot of his artwork for his singles. A lot of his um, his his uh, marketing plans and rollouts and things of that nature when he was pursuing music to, um, in that fashion um, as far back as I want to say 2014, and um, he decided me and him at the same time decided that we wanted to make a shift, we wanted to pivot. Mm -hmm. So um, he wanted to become more of an entrepreneur. So what we what we did was we sat down, we talked about this messaging, we talked about a concept, and he started a brand called Too Gifted. The brand Too Gifted, it is a brand where uh, he believes that your gifts should make room for you. He also believes mm -hmm. that uh, you're too gifted to be broke, too gifted to settle. Make sure is it me? Okay. We bet. Because we hear you and see you well. Man, give 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 us some flyer. Give, give okay, us some, are we some flyers if you got love this live so far. Yes. Okay, cool, cool. We in there. You good? You, you hear me? What? Yeah, yeah, I got you. Okay, perfect. So as you were saying, you made a collab. You, you yeah, got yeah, a collaboration so with. Uh, yeah, so uh, one of my artists that I was, um, you know, producing for a and r and managing at the time, um, he started a brand called Too Gifted, where um, he believes you're going to make room for you. He also believes that you're too gifted to be broke, too gifted to settle, too gifted to give up. We started putting those on T-shirts, and it grown from just selling it on um, through text messages and out of his trunk to he started promoting it online, where he made his first $10,000 in his first uh, six months. 
uh, mm -hmm. with this brand. Um, that led him to write a book. That book um, was also called Too Gifted. And, and that book, uh, he was able to sell in his first six months last year over 600 copies with that same, uh, that's, that same messaging. Jeez. And, and from there, he created a um, empowerment workshop program for uh children um for kids that's uh high school well pretty much you know kids in grade school and um since then <laughs> he's he's uh he's made over yeah he's made over six figures within the last like eight months doing that part time and now he's starting to incorporate his music within um, those workshops and everything that we was doing before. So now, like now, we're talking about monetizing and and, and making your uh, your gift make room for you. He's now doing anthems for schools in in New York, where he's starting to partner, make some key partnerships, where um, he has the likes of like Damon Dash. Uh, uh, Dame Dash is like reposting uh, the music video that he did for one of the schools, and what is 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 looking to be a very very close collabor uh, collaborative collaborative. Uh, a collaborator right. as well. So now he's going around and he's using his artistry when we're talking about creating songs and creating music. Now he's getting paid thousands of dollars per song that he's doing. So like, I just want people to, I, I want to let people know that's, that's on here. If you're an artist, if you're a producer, it's a lot of different ways in order to, to give value and actually be compensated for your value versus mm -hmm. just, um, you know, just, it's okay to put things on streaming and, and, and do that particular structure, but it's different ways of, of going about it. And I feel like more people need to be exposed to the entrepreneur side of it so we can actually capitalize and make, and make more impact. Taking notes as you, were as you were talking and out as you were sharing these gems, because it opens up so many doors for you to understand that there's more, there's more to it than simply the art side, the art side of the music business, you know, there's the, the actual, or the entertainment business, or just there's entrepreneurship. It, it's actually, you know, the music business for a reason, it's not the music art business, you know, it's, it's mostly focusing on business for the most part. Exactly. Now, what made you want to become a coach based on uh, some of the things you've learned and some of the things you went through? Yeah, so uh, what kind of um, landed me in the the coaching consulting is really, I'm just a person that loves to uh, be a problem solver, mm -hmm. whether that is um, when I was in the studio and I was helping people write, you know, uh, write their, their records. Oh, you should, um, for the hook, it should sound like this or for uh, the beat. If you add this part in the beat or me producing the beat for them or me creating the, the, the graphic design portion of it, I was always coaching in that aspect. So, um, as I made the pivot in 2019, I was introduced um, by the, the the concept of getting paid to think. Mm. So I was like, wow, like that's a thing? Like it, it so uh, basically the whole concept of what they call brand strategy, where um, you can sit down and you can actually uh, get a strategy, whether it's branding, whether it's marketing, whether it's messaging or whatever the case may be, uh, you can sit down and have these conversations with these businesses and you could get paid. Um, pe the person that I seen, he was, he was charging at least $10,000 just to have that conversation. Jeez. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. That's, that's when you know it's different because they don't charge for their, their time. It's the conversation. And that conversation can take 20 to 30 minutes, but that 20 to 30 minutes could change your life. Right. It's like, man, that's... That's when you get into different rooms. And it's important for those of you who just tune in or don't know, uh, produced by PAC, Maddie the Chef and myself are part of this morning meetup community. It's an entre it's an online community for entrepreneurs uh, throughout North America, not only North America, but there's uh, people in the UK too. Uh, you know, global, it's a global uh, universe. It's a global inter, it's a global internet community. And that internet community focuses on helping entrepreneurships, entrepreneurs, helps entrepreneurs understand the, the importance of business and networking together. So there's a lot of things that you guys are going to learn uh, based on what we've learned. And we're going to share these gems as we go. Now, 
another thing, another question I would like to ask you is, um, what is your favorite part? Because you talked about the aspect of helping people. You love helping people, and it helped you as a coach. So what what are some other parts that you like about coaching or as a brand, as a branding or? Uh, my my favorite part, it, it's really just um, doing something that I love. Like this is something that I I do like generally in life, just in general. So it doesn't really matter of um, what type of problem it was. Like I was helping one of my friends today. I was on the phone with her, and she was cleaning out her apartment. Um, she was cleaning out her apartment. So I was like, okay, let me assess the problem and see where you got going on. Okay, you feel overwhelmed because you got a lot of stuff going on. What's the smallest room in there? The bathroom? Let's let's knock out the bathroom. What's the next step? Oh, okay. You got that that bedroom. Let's clear out that bedroom. You Jeez. got some kids and stuff in there. Put the kids in there. Let them play or whatever. So you can focus on the rest of the house. So it doesn't really matter uh, what angle. I'm always helping people, but this is the 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 area where I feel like I can have the most value and impact because one is it's my passion. Um, I love music. I love entertainment. I also love entrepreneurship. And uh, two, just to be able to see like. Um, the people that I'm able to help and, and how I'm able to uh, help them get to that next level where they, they're able to now, like I had a friend, um, uh, he called me yesterday. He was like, yo, like uh, do all the things that we've done. Like now I'm able to actually buy like my first house. I had another, uh, another friend where uh, he was in, in the, the military and um, he pretty much pivoted from working into the military and me and him used to do music all the time in the military. And now where he put himself in a position where he's actually being paid um, full time for his actual job and, and, and position as an actual audio engineer. So like to be able to um, help these people push them in their purpose, like that's that's the best part for me. Like be able to sit back and watch like, wow, like what I'm doing actually um, is not only impactful, but um, they're able to 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 impact more people with the people that they're around. Mm, got it. And I love how you talk about your experience in the mil in the military with uh, that individual because uh, sometimes we think because we work at a certain place or we go to a certain school that is not necessarily aligned with our purpose. But every single detail, uh, every single detail in our story will actually eventually will help us get to our purpose or will help us get to a certain destination and we got to take uh take for account take take we can't take for granted that experience you know whatever we're we, we're working at a grocery store we're working at a a certain job we don't like or we're part of it we are in the military we want to leave at a certain point well then that experience could help you with either with it whether it was discipline or other things that are part of your music business music absolutely like some of the biggest lessons that I've learned was definitely in the military, especially business wise, because uh, the way that they construct how the military is, it teaches you how to run a, a, a million dollar corporation. Damn. <laughs> that's different. Now that's different. <laughs> hey, shout outs to you for real. Shout outs. That's dope. Now, Appreciate it. when it comes to um, like creatives, well-known creatives, entrepreneurs, um, who are some of the people you would love to work with? Because you talk about Lil B and other people uh, in Florida. So who are some of the big big names that you see right now? You're like, okay, I know I could add value to that person's life. Um, yeah, I, I kind of was thinking, because uh, I had this conversation with somebody uh, yesterday. It's not necessarily a, um, a a person per se, but I just fall in love with this brand. This brand is dope. I actually ate there yesterday. It's a brand called Slutty Vegan. I'm not sure. If oh, yeah, yeah. I, I would love. I She's would love killing to it. Be able, absolutely. Yeah, shout, shout out. Shout out to Pinky. Her, but, uh, yeah, Pinky. Pinky Cole. Uh, shout out to Pinky. I would love to be able to work with her where uh, to take her branding on a whole different uh, level, but also add the elements of going back to my roots. Right. Uh, 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 music to it as well. Like, imagine Slutty Vegan had their own, like, had their own theme song or they had their own uh, uh, mixtape or album or something like that, that is like the soundtrack to their brand. Like, I'd love to be able to do that. Hey, I made sure I, I pinned her. I'm going to add her just so she can see <laughs> this because she needs to hear these these gems, man. That's that's powerful. Like, that could change a lot of things in her business. That's amazing. Absolutely. Right. Now, uh, two last questions I'd like to ask you. And this is more of a little bit 
uh, insightful question. So I want you to dig deep. So mm -hmm. how does your music, or well, not, I don't even want to say music career because you, you retired as a music, uh, as a musician, right? So how does your career serve you in terms of who you are and who you want to be? Yeah, I, um, and, and the music is definitely still a big part of it. Um, I'll, I'll say this uh, with the things that I'm doing now. Right. Uh, I want to be able to help whether you're an artist, whether you're a musician, whether you're an entrepreneur, whether um, you know you have a business or whatever the case may be. I want to be able to be the reason why um especially our community right. um i work with everybody but especially our community i just see where the the trajectory go uh, is is going um i seen a um a study and the study said by the year of 2053 and this was before yeah. the pandemic that the 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 net worth yeah. of um african americans is actually going to be zero dollars so um i want to be one of the reasons why that doesn't happen for my community through the um, the aspects of um, entrepreneurship and branding, whether you're Oh, that's when IG starts hating. Yeah, that's when IG starts hating. Yeah, that's when IG starts hating. Oh, that's when IG starts hating. I hope you're getting these gems. I, I, I just said that's when IG starts hating. You, <laughs> you're getting <the> spicy. <laughs> I was like, oh, wow, right. okay. Yeah, you, you were talking about a port, well, 2053, uh, the Black American household, how it's going to go to zero, and you were getting spicy. Yeah, yeah, you're you're getting to that that punchline part. Um, yeah, I want to be the reason. I want to be one of the reasons why like that doesn't happen. I want to I want to be able to help whether you're a musician, you're you're a producer, you're an artist, you're an entrepreneur. Um, I want to be able to help everybody who I'm able to touch uh -huh. when it comes to their branding, when it comes to their marketing, so they can actually make more money. And not only that, but make make a bigger impact so they can spread and they can help even more people with the product or services that they have. That's amazing, man. Now, before I let you go, um, one of the questions I have to ask you is what's next for you and how can we get a hold of you? Absolutely. So uh, what's next? What's next is um, I have a program called Brand Like an Artist, where whether you're 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 an artist, you're a producer, um, you're an entrepreneur, um, if 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 we can, um, pretty much I have a program where I help. You know, all of these guys are service based entrepreneurs that I work with, and uh, what I do is I help them to make more money within their business by creating at uh, creating a thousand dollar offer now. Um, it's certain aspects where we have to be creative on how we're able to make that happen. But um, right now I'm doing a, um, a, a test trial version of the actual program. I actually have a one-on-one -on -one client right now, and I've been able to actually help him get his messaging, his foundation of what his brand um, has been about. Um, he's been doing this apparel um, line for about 11 years, and we was able to, to narrow all this down in two weeks. So mm -hmm. um, I, I want to be able to help at least three more people within the next month um, to, to be able to get that, that result, that end result. So that's the next thing that I have on my, on my plate. And then from there, it actually will become a, a, a group, um, pretty much a group program where you're able to actually network and, and, and meet with other people like the likes of um, the morning meetup. And uh, yeah, we could be able to build and, and be able to actually uh, have, you know, a stronger brand that people can, what I call, uh, where you could create what I call um, a, a, a core fanatic, which is, is, is somebody that raves about you or somebody that talks about you without even being in a room about the things, the, process, the, the content that you put out, the, the value that you're able to bring. And it's kind of like, you know, when you talk about your favorite artist, like, yo, did you hear that, that? You said, okay. did you hear that? A new song? Yeah, yeah. So, like, I, I want people to to think about your brand in that same aspect. Whether you're 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 mm -hmm. artist, you're a musician, um, you're or if you're an entrepreneur, I want people to have that same um, 
type of excitement about what you got going on and also are willing and excited to pay you to do so. Hey, that's amazing, man. Let me see if we have any, before I let you go, if we have any questions, because I see one, press one if you guys have any questions and want to go live with uh, myself, with produced by Pac and myself. It, this this live was amazing, and, and I appreciate you for actually sharing these gems and sharing your story, because it means a lot to people who feel like they don't have the resources or the mindset equipped for them to get to that level, to that next level, and you you've shown that you're you're able to get it from the mud, you know. And I and I don't even hear any stories about, based on what you're telling me, I don't even hear any stories about. Oh, my uncle did this for me. My my cousin did that for me. Like you you figured out a way to get it done to to make it happen by yourself, and you know great results are gonna happen. And then you all, you obviously collaborate with uh, people who have the same mindset as you. Absolutely, and that's one of the biggest things. Um, I was just watching. Um, I'm I'm almost finished with the second episode, Connie. but. Yeah, the Kanye, yeah. <laughs> Kanye doc. And, um, I was taking some notes from it, and um, three of the big things that I, I took from it is is one, um, as a as a creator, you have to know who you are. You have mm -hmm. to figure out what your identity is. If you if you don't know who you are, then other people will tell you. This is this is this is where, uh, you know, if you get an idea, oh, I can only sell on beat for thirty dollars for a lease or something like that. Like if if you know that's not who you want to be. Um, and that's you're not limited to only that, then um, you know that there's other opportunities out there. Um, and that's exactly what Kanye was. It didn't matter. Like, people were trying to box him in as a uh, producer. And he was like, nah, like, don't, don't, don't tell me I'm, the, I'm one of the best producer rappers out here. I'm one of the best rappers. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and um, another thing that I've, I, I've learned uh, watching the, the, the doc was, the art of leveraging other people's um, uh, platforms by delivering your value. So mm -hmm. uh, he wasn't able to record a lot of his records um, when he was working on his first album. So what he did was knowing that he's one of the hottest producers out, he would produce for a lot of high level um, uh, rappers and entertainers. Right. And what he would do is, uh, since he didn't have money to have an actual uh, to get a studio session to get all these people to come in a lot of times what uh -huh. he did was he would produce some records for them they would record and then at the back end of their session that's where he would record a lot he would record a lot of give us some flames if you guys are enjoying this so far he would record a lot of yes yeah. He he re he would record a lot of the records that's on his album from their sessions. So, uh, like for instance, um, he didn't have a session when uh, he got Ludacris on the album. Ludacris was right. just in the in uh, he was in the studio. He was showing them a couple beats or whatever. They uh, I guess he ended up giving them a beat or two. It could have been any beat. It could have been stand up or whatever the whatever the the records that he produced for uh, Luda at the time. But um, in that session, he was able to get him to record the hook for Breathe In, Breathe Out. And that ended up on his album. Jeez, that was strategic. We got one question from Maddie the Chef. So he says, what were some of the mindset blocks you struggled with in the beginning of the production pack? Uh, comparison, um, for sure. Mm. Especially when we first getting started. What, what we do is as producers, we... We look online and we're just like, yo, like, how can I get better a lot quicker? So we go on YouTube and we look at a lot of these different producers and they, they, they're they really talented. So um, mm -hmm. a lot of times we stunt our own growth trying to emulate exactly who those who those people are. So mm -hmm. um, that was one of the biggest things where, like, I felt like my beats wasn't that great. I needed to do a lot of work. I needed to overcomplicate things. Like, as a producer, the only thing, only go your goal is to uh, create um, an energy or create something that sounds good. That's it. It doesn't matter how you're able to do it. Even if you take one loop, uh, one loop here, and then you add some drums on it, it, mm -hmm. it, it could be as simple as that. Like some of the best beats are just a, a clip of a sample just re-looped. <laughs> you're giving us, you're giving us so, way too many gems right now. Hope, hope, hope they're gonna cash after you something, man. 
Well, like, <laughs> I appreciate you for joining us. And uh, could you give us a final word or anything, a word of encouragement or inspiration for anyone who's listening? Absolutely. So uh, when it comes to, you know, this journey that we have, and entrepreneurship and also as a creative, whether you're an artist or a producer, um, identify where you want to go. Uh, if you have that end destination of where you want to go and actually make it quantifiable, make it actually tangible. Um, a lot of times we just live life and we allow life to take us wherever it goes. And then when, once we get to whatever destination that is, we kind of confused about um, how did we get here or why I don't have results because we're not being intentional. So uh, be super intentional about where you want to go by working backwards. Figure out where you want to go first. Be super, super detailed about what that end destination is. Look, look at where you're starting and how do you, how do you fill the gaps in order to uh, orchestrate a plan to get there. So um, that right there alone would allow you to not make certain decisions at certain times where things can become distractions. People will tell you, hey, let's do this, or hey, let's do that. And it's not in alignment with where you want to go. If you don't know where you want to go, then uh, you'll allow people to take you off course. So um, that's that's something that I like to leave with everybody. I love it, man. We got Maddie the That's Shepherd amazing. Coming. Yo, 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 man. Like, my internet's being spicy right now, y'all, but I've literally been... <laughs> I literally been listening this whole time, um, Charles. That stuff is that 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 all that stuff is amazing. Uh, you talked about, I mean, you even talked about like your time in the military and the discipline factor. I know that that's one thing that that we can struggle with a lot too, as music producers, when you don't have, you know. I mean, I know that I struggle with that too, which was that discipline you know, that discipline factor, what, how specifically did the military um, help you with the discipline? Uh, if, if you don't mind me asking, how did the military specifically help you with the discipline? Because in music production, it can be sometimes a solitary activity. So you kind of have to govern yourself. You know, you are an entrepreneur, you know, as a music producers and even, you know, independent singer songwriter. So you have to like, know that you're going to go into the studio and be productive and you know you got to stay like like you got to be creative but 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 also stay on on a time frame so you know help us out with that like you know what what how did the military help you as a music producer um just govern yourself you know yeah so um i'll be honest as well like when it comes to actual discipline even though i was in the military um, what the biggest thing I learned was structure and it's something I still deal with as well. So like, I'm not going to say it like I have that answer, like totally figured out. But what I can say, the biggest thing that I learned was once you put yourself in a particular structure, it allows you to actually um, quantify and figure out, okay, like this is the area of where I'm working in. So um, when I was in the military, you know, uh, I got to work at anywhere between anywhere between six thirty and seven thirty, for the most time. Mm -hmm. And um, it allowed me to okay, you have to put the important things first. Mm -hmm. So structure out your day where it's like whatever is the most um, top of your priority. Make sure you you knock those things out in that uh, that particular time frame. you're able to uh plan out and actually execute the things that you need to execute right right right. like like there's the uh book the one thing uh if people can you know want to check that out one uh, the one yeah is, but the core idea is to to actually take the time to think about you know the one thing that you need to do and kind of right is it like take take it one thing at a time you know like really really focus in on, I mean, even in music production, you know, it's like, yeah, you could, you know, as a music producer, you're almost like the, uh, like the artist, you're almost kind of playing that role too, and you know, you're kind of playing multiple at one time, but it's like, yo, all right, let's just, let's just focus in on putting down the bass melody. Let's focus in on, 
you know, creating like the books and the B sections and things like that in the song, then we'll then we'll step into like putting on our music producer's hat. I mean, excuse me, our audio engineering hat. Then we'll step into putting in uh, putting on our, our mastering hat if you're doing that too. You know, and there are three different hats, you know, and and sometimes as the with the music the, with the engineering hat, you gotta tell the music producer who's you. Yo, that joke, like, you got to take that, that sound that you really loved out of that track. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got to take it out of there because it doesn't fit, it's clashing, and it's not even going to work. So having that structure is, is very, uh, uh, very specific. I mean, very important to producing the song, you know? And I like what you talked about earlier, too, which was, you know, for music producers, just getting out of the mindset of being just like the beat maker, you know, mm -hmm. like everybody's like, you know, mm -hmm. is and then artists are like artists. A lot of the time, a lot of independent artists, just just starting emerging artists are like, hey, you know, yo, let me get a beat. Let me get a beat. And I'm like, you kind of want more. Hopefully you'd want more of the music producer to be a part of the production of the whole song and not just man like producing. I mean, not just making a beat for you so you can hop up on and things like that. You want that music producers uh, brain invest that that mental investment in your song so that that song like you know goes up you know what i'm saying there's this actual uh y'all y'all not essentially flinging music at the wall and seeing what's going to hit you know what i'm saying stick which is what a lot of a lot of artists are doing right now they're like all right we're going to hop in this joint make a vibe and see what sticks the flip side to that though is when you are trying to too hard to make some music and it, you can struggle with like, you're like, all right, we're going to make a, a mid-tempo R&B song, you know, for the urban contemporary market and so on and so forth. You know, that's too difficult. That's, sometimes that could be too difficult uh, mm -hmm. to do. So finding that balance between uh, the structure, the genius, and the flow, you know, the energy of the music being produced is, I think is, is extremely important. Absolutely. I remember um, one of the first things that I invested in was a course by um, it was a mentorship program with um, Curtis King at Epic Beats. If y'all if y'all yeah. familiar with uh, yeah Curtis King, yeah. yeah and um, and Epic Beats is really one of the people who really got father the type beat um, movement. Like he was one of the first uh, uh, producers to 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 do it like that through SoundClick and then moved over to YouTube. But um, one of the things that uh, I learned in that in that particular program and uh, it was really separating. Right, you have the the scientists and the artists, like you were saying. So like allow space for when you're in your artistry and you're in your creativity zone to to get into your workflow and your zone of genius, like you were saying before in the comments. By just all right today, we just uh, in this particular uh, portion of the session, we're just creating. Just had this conversation right. with my bro yesterday. Uh, that that was the audio engineer. So like when you're making a beat, uh, crank out as many ideas as possible. If you want to make a B section, make the B section. Don't even worry about the mixing. Don't worry about uh, the the arrangement or nothing like that. Just just right. create. Like get all get all of those ideas out. And then what you do is later on in the session, okay, now I'm going to put on, like you said, the, the you know, the, the artist hat, the engineering, uh, not the artist, but the, the scientist, the, the yeah. engineering part. So now, like, how can I arrange this record to, to make this record actually something that's digestible? How can I uh, take elements? Do I need to load the volume on this? Do I do a little bit of mixing? Do I add a little filter here? Like, allow yourself to, to stay in that mind frame so it's not like you're trying to do all of these things together because it's going to stunt your process and your creativity process for sure. Uh, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's a hundred percent. Like that's a hundred percent. No, that's a hundred percent because, but that's a part of the structure. That's a part of the process and like, and being able to be free in that and saying, yo, this specific time, just like you said, this specific time, I'm just creating. Uh, and then this specific time I'm going in, and looking at the science of it. So I don't want to repeat what you just said, but that's, that's, that's a hundred percent, you know, uh, that's amazing. Um, and then also, like I, I love the fact that, you know, with music producers just emerging and getting started guys is that, you know, like this is where you can end up going. 
Yeah. You know, this is where you can end up serving. Um, you know, you have a, a love for helping people. You know, I mean, music production should be, you know, should be a place of, it is a place of serving people. You know, we're creating mm -hmm. moods. We are setting, we are adding soundtracks to people's lives. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been watching, um, I don't watch a bunch of TV. Commercials that were playing mm -hmm. or whatever like that had all this old music you know, from the 60s and the 70s and things like that in the, uh, you know, along with like the Samsung commercials and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So it's like, if as long as you're making like a mood, you know, you're, 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 you're making a vibe for people, you know, like that music can live on for a long time. This is for artists and music producers. You know, that music can Absolutely. live on for a long time. Um, I wanted to talk about real quickly, bro, like the, the, the 20 beats, the 20... Five beats for twenty dollars. You know what I'm saying. Talk about the crack. You know what I'm saying. The crack prices. You know what I'm saying for the beats and things like that. Because that's a that's a point of contention um, for me. Because again, when you hop on like the Airbits, Airbit, and uh, Beat Stars, these are music producer websites. You know, Sound SoundClick ain't really doing too much. Like I don't know if SoundClick is doing what's well, up. Anyways, but. I see a lot of people, again, trying to promote themselves, trying to advertise and really like bringing the beats down. Mm. And I'm like, it never made sense to me. I tried to hop on there. I never saw like I never sold one beat on Airbit. I never sold one beat on Airbit. And um, that, that was my hosting platform. I never sold one beat on there. And, you know, I'm steadily paying for this, but I never sold one beat. The majority, the music that I sold though was in the contacts with people, in the meeting with people, and it was for way more. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Then, then, you know, I had beats at fifty dollars, and then I brought them down to like thirty nine dollars, twenty nine dollars. You know, and this is just like, from a branding perspective, they don't look like they're expensive music. So I'm attracting a certain demographic who is not really that serious about. Right. doing anything or putting any investing any money into their project anyways so i don't understand the point in it but let me, let, me, let me know what your thoughts are yeah i think um when it comes to that particular business model um one if the biggest value that you have to bring into the marketplace is just your instrumentation of your beats then right. um you already behind the curve because there's thousands of producers that are looking to do the exact same thing that you're doing so how can you uh uh branch out and and bring yourself in a way that's a little bit different i had the same struggles as well when it comes right. to um because i was using airbit as well i think i sold like two beats on or airbit but um it that strategy five beats for twenty dollars for example um it could work per se in, in regards to what is your goal for do, for for doing it or what's your angle. But I, me personally, I feel like it, it, like you were saying, not serious about um, investing in their crafts as a musician. But not only that, but um, they 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 don't value. <laughs> the the actual process of actually creating something and actually not only that but how do you bring a return on on profit especially if you feel like if this thing is so good why is it five for twenty so um, facts I I do see I do uh, agree that there's a lot better ways of doing that and the and the better way isn't just hiking up your prices just because like. Um, Oh, it's not selling at thirty dollars. I'm gonna sell it at five hundred just because. But how can you, um, with with your expertise, your knowledge, how can you present a, an experience or solve a particular problem that is something other than just a beat? So you can um, market yourself as such. So, like for instance, everything that has video needs to use it. Right. Right. So now, so now, you can you can think about different opportunities that you have um, in order to to make that to to monetize that particular opportunity. So instead of you doing 
you know, five beats for twenty dollars, maybe you can do a pack. You could do a pack, uh, a theme pack, and you could put like maybe like a group of six to eight beats together, and, and you can tailor that particular music just based off of the demographic that you want to uh, to look for. So, like, let's say is is um, content creators, people that 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 does uh, that puts out video, whether it's a podcast or they have a YouTube channel, whatever the case may be. You can put together this vibe. Let's say uh, we borrow from the tight beats uh, concept. Yeah. Um, sounds like uh, sounds like uh, elevator music. Sounds like background music. Sounds like right. uh, a day at the park or something like that, right? You can you can put these packages of music together and put them to be royalty free and sell those for two hundred and fifty dollars. And now uh, you created a uh, a solution to a problem. Hey, I just need some really dope background music that I'm not going to get flagged on YouTube, that I'm not going to get flagged on Facebook or Instagram for using that music, but also put yourself in a position where um, it sounds like something that is alignment with the, the, the mood and the environment of the brand that you're looking for instead of going through hundreds of different types of music. Exactly. Is, and everybody got that music. Funny. I already did that work for you. This is this is this is my my package that you can um you can purchase for two hundred and fifty dollars, and not only that, but um you can add you know whatever type of experience to it as well. Like maybe uh, you get their emails, you get their uh, phone. So now. One beat for uh for five dollars or four dollars <laughs> to to capitalize and now you have a $250 uh, uh, product that I feel like most people would definitely, if you're in that world like podcasting or uh, content creation, you will pay for that type of experience rather than uh, then like depending on like the YouTube library or trying to figure out how you can Yo, get the the so, yeah. Exactly, the YouTube libraries are hmm. trash and even, so, and even for, again, for the singer-songwriters uh, the emerging artists, guys, you guys can do this as well, yeah. though, too. You guys can do this as well. Music producers, that's the whole point of this platform is to, you know, give people some, give, give music producers, emerging music producers and emerging artists the game as to what you can do and to create a, a community for you guys, for people to network, um, come together. You know, again, if you need to, that GPS, whatever it happens to be, you know, coaching, you know, I coach music producers, Max, Work uh, uh, coaches, singer, songwriters, produced by Pack is doing the branding for the entrepreneurship. So, the so anyways, going back to that that idea, which is singer songwriters, you guys can uh, have music. You know, like let's say you have a song that is like a '60s sort of vibe. You know, we call it retro soul. You know, or whatever like that. That type of stuff is used for content creation as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's not just the music producers. Then with the music producer side, music producers can, you can have the bundle or you can just say, hey, look, let's do a continuity model. $39.99, you know what I'm saying? You, you have access to, I don't know, a certain amount of, num a certain amount of music, um, royalty-free music on my website um, a month or whatever like that. So the continuity model, so just, but just, but the, but the $29.99, I mean, it, the, that stuff has to die. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't make any sense from a business perspective. All of the work that you put in, and yeah, you do find like I can understand like it's like it's almost like the 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 Walmart model. You know what I'm saying? But Walmart mm -hmm. is is such a big business, and Walmart's got so much uh, so much inventory, qual you know, so much inventory, and Walmart has a tier system. You know, like but, a good tier only, system. But, but not only that, the reason why Walmart is as successful as it is is because they were the first to do what they do. Right, right. <laughs> so, exactly. They're the first to do what they do. So, there's this, um, and like, I forgot, I, I don't know what it is, but it's like because they're the first to do what they do, they have that, I guess, brand loyalty, yep. right. you know, from people. So, if somebody tries, else tries to come out with that same model, it's going to be like, eh, like Walmart's in my mind first. So, why am I going to go to, About, uh, you know, 
prison structures as well. Uh, this is why I teach, you know, everybody that I work with, all my clients and all, all of my I call corporate next as well, is um, a lot of times, like, let's say one of the first goals that an entrepreneur has is, hey, I want to make six figures in my business, right? Right. In order to make six figures in your business, you have to make $8,333 per month every single month in order to add up and, and, and to make that a reality, right? So um, a lot of times, you know, I, I hear, like, let's say a producer, for example, they put that burden on a $30 beat. Mm. <laughs> and, yeah. and when you put that, that burden on a $30 beat, the amount of, of, of um, input that has to be expressed to get that type of output is something that is not really realistic in, in, in the capability that you have in this moment. So um, right. in order to actually make that 8,333, 8, you have to sell over 336 um beats in a month and that's every single month in order to make that happen you know how hard it is to sell one beat <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah so so why not price why why not you create an offer and the offer is something that is valuable where um if i pay if if i pay this one price of um um let's say um a hundred dollars and the time and and and, the, and what they're able to get from that particular value from that hundred dollars is let's say a thousand dollars every ten. A thousand dollars, yeah. I would pay a hundred dollars for that any time, and it doesn't matter how much that that number is. If I'm paying, like you would pay, you would pay ten thousand dollars to get a hundred thousand dollars. Yep, right. That's so, the model. Yeah. If you can figure out how you're able to get that type of value for whatever. Uh, um, product or service that you deliver, then you'd be able to have a, a much solid uh, business structure where you're actually able to um, make that reality happen. Right. Yeah. I mean, we, like, and that just kind of goes into that aspect of knowing that you're, you know, being serious and saying, yo, I'm doing this as a business, you know, again, the, I am a music producer, all your affirmations, you know, it's so crucial because, so often I would struggle with, you know, like I'm, I'm producing music. I'm putting my heart and soul into the music. You know, I watched that Kid Cudi. I highly suggest that people watch the Kid Cudi documentary um, on, uh, on Amazon Prime. But, you know, again, you put your heart and soul into the music as a music producer and an emerging artist. And it's just like I put my heart and soul into this, like where, you know, what? I, I need to, besides putting your heart and soul into it, you need to know what the business as part portion of it is. You know, I think that that's where a lot of folks, you know, you had a lot of folks from the seventies and the eighties who were just like straight up musicians and were like, yo, we're getting jacked up by the record label. Yep. And the record label is the people who actually are taking that music, that content and essentially sharing it to the world, but from a business, like from a business model. Mm -hmm. And so a business perspective. And so as independent musicians and uh, uh, singer songwriters um, or yeah, singer songwriters, we need to like think about, yo, we're we're we are a business. Right. We're we are um, like I said, I'm a music producer. When you're thinking like that, you're making movements like a music producer. Um, you know, you are you're again, making music to, that, ha, that is valued and you can offer it to people and it makes sense from a business perspective and for your, for your time, I guess, that you put into it, you know? Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think that the, the business aspect is something that we just forget about. Like, we don't think about it. Like, honestly, y'all, like, like, putting together, you know, again, contracts and all that type of stuff, like, like that's, the, that's a, a, a next step after the, the after you done made the music, you know, copywritten the music, which is a portion of the business aspect. You know, what I'm saying you got to do that type of stuff. Um, but then, oh shoot, we're okay. Well, over time. All right. So, um, but again, thinking about yourself as a music producer or as a singer songwriter holistically, you will say, okay, what do I need? What do I need to to, to set myself up as a as a business? You know, um, again, I said earlier when you were just talking about the coaching. And, you know, like, like the fact that you get to keep, like you get coaching, but you get to keep that, in, you, you pay $10,000, but you get to keep that information for the rest of your life. Yep. Absolutely. I think that that's what's missed whenever we put a, think about the price point 
with coaching is we're like, dang, this John like, you know, five thousand, ten thousand, eighty six thousand dollars. Myron Golden, the young brother, twenty six years old. I'm still tripping about that. Paid eighty six thousand dollars, and instead, maybe even out of college. But he said, what with the information, eighty six thousand dollars, that's probably gonna get me a lot of closer to my million dollar goal uh, than you know than even like shoot like a a ten dollar a uh, a hundred dollar course a two hundred dollar course because I have personal time yeah. with that person to walk me through the stuff. Uh, Tony Robbins said about coaching, he said, it's not, co- it's not that we coaches are actually better than the person. It's that we're on the outside right? and are able to look in and help you. You know what I'm saying? Because you're actually, and I've said this before, you're actually in the game. You're playing. And mm-hmm. that's why we need coaching. You know, like coaches should have coaches, right? You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Like, but, but that's so profound because, again, when you're on the field, when you're playing a game, you don't have the time to see uh, – I always think about football. You don't have the time to see that the defense is – if y'all got one play left, you know what I'm saying, you need the coach to be bird's eye view and say, yo, I can see right. what's going on here. Let's do this. Right. You know, let's do that. You know, have somebody on the outside. So that's what that's what coaching is. And it took me, yeah, it took me a little bit. It took me about almost a year to understand what coaching is. Right. You know, and and the necessity for it. But uh, I'm a yeah. big fan of it. Yeah, Phil you know, Jackson. Um, uh, Phil Jackson yeah. would never be a, a better basketball player than Jordan, but he was able to to coach him to be that best player ever. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Right, Phil Jackson. And what's the other, what's the other guy name who um. Talking about Pat Riley? No, 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 not not Pat Riley. He was the the general manager for the Bulls. Oh. Oh, um, I forget his name, but I know exactly who it is. Anybody know the general managers for the Bulls? Please (laughs) please put it, uh, Kraus, something Kraus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyways, so the dude Kraus, though, he was integral to the Bulls being the Bulls as well because he's on the outside saying, okay, we got got Michael Jordan. We got – that that reminds me of a music producer. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You know, like being kind of like Krauss is like, mm-hmm. all right, we got we got the drums here, we got this here, we got this here. All right, let's this is how we can this is how we can put this stuff together. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So honestly, kind of just being a musician, but taking yourself, but looking at other different businesses and and things like that, and, and figuring out how you can integrate that into your business is extremely important for success Absolutely. in Absolutely. music production. Bro, I thoroughly appreciate you, man. This was this 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 was excellent, man. Um, you know, you're definitely. Uh, I want to just even to talk about branding, guys. If you see this gentleman's frames and the hat, if you see this guy's <laughs> frames and the hat, I I want y'all to take notice of this these things because this is this is branding. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying, Curtis? You talked about Curtis King. Curtis King for a long time. Essentially, he was a, a um, he was a uh, uh, a, uh, a coach of mine, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying, a mentor of mine, because I consumed a lot of his uh, information. Uh, but he always had, like, the, the high-top fade, you know what I'm right. saying, for a couple seasons. That was his branding, you know what I'm saying. Um, you know, like, again, some of my branding is the, is the locks, you know what I'm saying, going over to the side, you know what I'm saying, or whatever like that. That's the branding aspect of it. So when you think about yourself being a business, think about yourself being like Coca-Cola all of that type of stuff, mm-hmm. you have to, it's, it's deeper than the music production. Absolutely. But you've got to be a really great music producer and a really great songwriter to even get, to even, even have a seat at the table. You know what right, I'm saying? Right. Or whatever like that. Drake you, is another example, too. He changed yeah, his, Drake he is. Changed Drake. His every hour. Haircut? Yep. Yep. Right, right. Yep, yep, yep. Drake, I mean, we have to look at the, Breaking up, it down to. Am I breaking up? No, you. All right, you you got on my end. Okay, I was saying we have to look at these major businesses and and siphon down what they did, you know, and say, okay, I I might not have a you know, you know, five hundred billion dollars budget on marketing, but I can I can see what they did and I can do a little bit of that, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Or I don't I might not have a big you know, studio and things like that, but I can see what they did and I can do a little bit, a little bit portion of that, you know, and can, and continue to reinvesting. Um, with Kanye stuff, though, the last thing I'm going to say though with Kanye stuff was this, cause you brought that up. 
is that Kanye, for the music producers, if you are like, you have to think I am a music producer, you're bigger than just beat making. Because mm -hmm. Kanye is like, yo, like, uh, I remember Jamie Foxx was talking about how he met Kanye the first time. <laughs> and Kanye is like, you know, um, he says she wants some R&B. Uh, I mean, the, uh, what's, the, what's the song uh, called? Uh, uh, slow Jams. Uh, yeah. Slow Jams. Slow so, so, right. So, so, so Kanye is so confident in what he knows, what he wants to hear as a producer. Yeah. He is like, he goes to Jamie. He's like, yeah, Jamie, I got a song for you. And Jamie's like, you know, you know, Jamie's Jamie Foxx or whatever like that, known way more than Kanye. Jamie's like, yeah, okay, cool. He's like, he's like, I'm Jamie's like, I'm some R&B on it. Like, you says you want some more. And, and he's like, Kanye's like, don't do that, dog. Don't do that. Don't do that. You know? And yeah. so he's like, whoa, wait a minute. But then that's what, right, that's what, that's why we have slow jams today. Because Kanye was more than a beat maker. He was a music producer. Mm -hmm. And he knew who he was. essentially a songwriter, right? He knew exactly what he was and what he wanted, mm -hmm. you know. So that clarity is extremely important for uh, the music producer and a songwriter, mm -hmm. you know. Um, who sometimes they both will wear each other's hats, you know. Sometimes. So, anyways, bro, man, I appreciate you, man, coming through. Um, Absolutely. Again, it's been a blessing, you know. Uh, learning, I didn't even know that you was in the military, you know, uh, and stuff like that. But um, mm -hmm. just learning about your uh, journey and, and all those things. I really, you know, want to see a lot more from you guys. If you guys are watching this right now, watching this on a replay, please go follow my guy Produced by Pack. That is P-R-O-D-B-Y-P-A-C-K. All right, that's Produced by Pack, bro. All right? Nah, I definitely, I oh, definitely appreciate y'all having me. And, um, yeah. when, whenever y'all, you know, uh, we can do this again, uh, <laughs> just yeah. let me know. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm I love what you guys are doing and helping the uh, the artists, the artists and the musicians out there to actually become a better version of themselves. So I love to be able to be part of that vision as well. Appreciate and produced you. by Pac is produced by Pac has a K on the end of that. Yeah. Uh, Max. Hey, hey Akila, what's going on? Add that. Akila, you should have gotten to here at watch the replay. Akila, I'm trying to tell you, watch the replay. It's going to be on Max's. Uh, uh, IG, uh, amazing gems were dropped today, and bro, you know what I'm saying. We definitely, man, we'll definitely have you. We'll, we want to. I want to figure out a segment, and I'll talk to you offline about that. But okay. you know, figure out something that we can do. You know what I'm saying? Where, um, where we're probably just you know discussing some more music and stuff like that. All absolutely. right, absolutely, absolutely. Let's do it. All right, all right. Peace, you guys. Yeah. Yes, yes, there it was. Appreciate you guys. Have a good one.